You're tuned to Wish TV Channel 8. This is News 8, the weekend edition with Eric Halverson, Tina Cosby, weather with meteorologist Tom Magnuson, and sports with Jim Barber. Good evening. In what can only be called one of the rockiest weekends in quite a while, the presence of Mother Nature has been felt from coast to coast. Early yesterday morning, mild earthquakes shook parts of northern Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, and Kentucky. Today in Southern California, a strong tremor measuring 5.3 on the Richter scale hit the second in six days. A 55-year-old woman reportedly died from a heart attack after the quake today. Several aftershocks were reported within 75 minutes. Damage reports include broken windows, rock slides, and downed power lines. Last Tuesday, 40 people were injured when a tremor struck 12 miles northwest of Palm Springs. In murder in Indianapolis is up significantly compared to last year, and a city official is calling it a confusing situation. Including a murder last night, five people have been shot to death in less than a week. And as News 8's Neil Moore reports, City Hall is getting concerned. It's been a bloody week. Last Wednesday, the bodies of 37-year-old Charles Hoskinson and 22-year-old Thomas Phelps were found in their east side apartment. The two had been shot execution style. Late Friday night, 22-year-old Antoinette Barrera died after being shot in the chest during a domestic argument. This is where 14-year-old Larry Woods died just a few hours later. The teenager was shot five times after apparently walking in on a robbery in progress. A store clerk was also shot, but survived. And then last night, the latest killing. Shortly before midnight, the body of 22-year-old Brian McCombs was found here in the parking lot of this food store on Central Avenue. He had been shot in the head. It was the eighth murder in the city of Indianapolis since the first of this month. What's going on here? Joe Slash is a deputy mayor of Indianapolis. We want to try to find some answers, and I'm not sure what they are. Consider this. On July 13th of last year, the city had recorded a total of 26 murders. This year, the homicide count already stands at 39, a 50% increase. We're obviously very concerned that uh, it seems like on an annualized rate of um, homicides this year, we're going to be far ahead of where we were at the end of 1985, and that does bother us. Slash says the city has responded, noting the change of leadership in the police department's homicide branch and a meeting between detectives and the prosecutor's office. And then there's the question of image. The city's murder rate is well below that recorded in the early 1980s, and it hardly approaches the killing fields of New York, Chicago, or Detroit. But Slash concedes Indy's future growth will depend in part on its national reputation as a safe place to live. We are concerned, and we want to do something about it before um, it does affect our image. Slash promises the city's homicide problem will be discussed this week at a meeting with Mayor Hudnut, the police chief and public safety director. Meanwhile, as one detective said, there's just too much killing going on. In Indianapolis, Neil Moore, Wish TV, News 8. Two employees of an Indianapolis air conditioning company were involved in a chemical spill late this morning. Tony and Ron Thomas were burned when nitric acid spilled on them while cleaning a heat exchanger for the air conditioning system at Shaboom's restaurant downtown. Rescue crews doused the workers with water to remove chemicals. 100% nitric acid burns pretty badly. Uh, they were in the process of getting it diluted and they hadn't gotten it diluted uh, before it spilled. Tony Thomas was admitted to the burn unit at Wishard Hospital and is listed in stable condition. Ron Thomas was treated for minor burns and released. A Lafayette, Indiana man has been identified as one of three Marines killed in a helicopter crash off the coast of Japan. Military officials say 29-year-old Captain James Sanders was piloting the aircraft when it went down. The helicopter crashed about 9 o'clock Thursday night while taking part in the night flight operation. The cause of the accident is under investigation. A clamp of secrecy surrounds the investigation of Friday's crash of a mysterious aircraft in California Sequoia National Forest. Air armed Air Force guards have sealed off a large area of the forest. The Pentagon will not say what kind of plane went down, but there is speculation it was most likely an F-19, an experimental stealth aircraft that employs the latest anti-radar technology. The plane's pilot, who was killed, has been identified as Major Rolf Mohair. Earthbound accidents are often blamed on drinking and driving. This is true on the water as it is on our roads. In fact, about three-quarters of all fatalities on the water are blamed on drinking. But it can be difficult to catch drunk boaters. 
Blake Perkins is one of the people who try to enforce the laws on Indiana's waterways. Let me get them off the front of the boat, please. Thank you. He has to stay alert because there's so much activity here, and that's part of the problem. It's not feasible to stop every boat that's on the water. Can you go ahead and shut your boat off for me? But the presence of alcohol emphasizes the need to look for violations. I smell a lot of alcohol. I didn't smell a lot because I've only had one. I would say that uh, because of the amount of concentration of the water and the amount of boats that you come across that are drinking, that the percentages of people who operate boats is probably far higher than those who operate automobiles. The search for drunk boaters and those who violate other boating laws is complicated by the fact that these people are out here just to have fun. We take as little of their time as possible to see that they have as safe a time as possible. And sometimes the conservation officers may seem demanding. Okay, I count 14 of you. I need to see 14 live they're, they're not on the boat. We're, not with them. We're towing them. Okay. They are in fact in watercraft considered by the state of Indiana. You, number one, you cannot swim in this county. So you're either swimming or boating. We're just floating to our house. Okay, you can't do that. You can't? No. An inner tube. My law's considered a boat. If they, had, if they could show me a life jacket, they're, they're, they're absolutely well within the confines of the law. Take the nearest vantage point that you can get out, get out and walk. I mean, at this point, these people think that we're, we're very unfair. Yeah. You know, we've ruined their day. Uh, they don't stop to think that possibly we'll save somebody's life. Perkins didn't stop any drunk voters today. The citations he issued were for other violations, but he says at least the word is out. They're being watched. That's good to know. Still ahead on News 8, here's a question for you married people. If you had it to do over again, would you say, I do? We'll tell you what participants in a recent survey had to say. Call me. Has hit in the network. Supporters of deposed Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos didn't get a chance to hold a rally in Manila today. Riot police broke up the demonstration before it started. About 150 people gathered near the headquarters of last week's failed rebellion for a rally against the government of Corazon Aquino. But President Aquino's police and army made sure that the protesters never got a chance to get started. In all, it was a good-natured confrontation which barely disturbed a private picnic in the park. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, government troops are hunting for armed men who kidnapped an American missionary and 10 Roman Catholic nuns from their convent. Philippine officials believe Muslim rebels are behind the abduction. Pope John Paul has appealed for the release of the nuns, calling them defenseless people who have become the objects of violence and outrage. An interesting footnote to the current state of matrimony in the United States came about recently after a Chicago Sun-Times survey. The paper asked a group of married men if they had it to do over, would they marry their current wives? More than three-fourths of those who answered said yes. Why, you might ask? The reasons ranged from she is my partner, my mistress, my best friend, to who else would do my laundry. Well, if you're looking for a job that pays better than doing laundry for your spouse, you may want to turn to Wish TV's job track for help. Here's tonight's participant. <laughs> Mark Austin. I'm seeking a position as a graphic artist. I have past experience in paste-up, layout, illustration, and photography, as well as sales and management. I have a college degree in industry and printing technology and a minor in fine arts. I work well independently or with the public. I'm also versatile and enjoy a challenge. My references and portfolio are available upon request. Thank you for your consideration. Employers, if this individual meets your requirements, call the Indiana Employment Security Division's downtown office at 232-7725 for more information. Well, we did get some relief from the humidity today across Indiana. We also had a lot of sunshine and temperatures that were pretty pleasant, but watch out. The humidity is coming back tomorrow. Tom Magnuson is approved by the American Meteorological Society. Well, it was hard not to enjoy today. We had the lower humidity, sunshine, almost an ideal weekend day. Right, right. Yeah, it was perfect. When uh, getting out on the boats through White River today, it was uh, a good time. It was a good trip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, good. Uh, we're going to have some changing weather for tomorrow, though. Humidities are already building to the southwest. And today in Indianapolis, the official high was 86 degrees. 
and our low is 70 this morning. The normals are 85 and 65, and at the airport this calendar day, one one hundredth of an inch of rain shortly after midnight. Right now, partly cloudy skies, a layer of clouds at 15,000 feet, temperature 73, and the dew points back up to 68 degrees again. It's a little sticky out there, 84 percent, the relative humidity, southwest wind at 6, and the pressure is 3008 and rising. And all up and down Indiana today, temperatures were in the 80s, a pretty pleasant day. But down south, the humidity stayed, so a little more uncomfortable in the southern part of the Hoosier State. Highs outstate in the 80s for the most part, but it did reach 90 at St. Louis and Paducah, Kentucky. And current temperatures are ranging all the way from the upper 60s at Rockford and South Bend to the 80s at Springfield and St. Louis. That may be an indication of some slightly warmer weather pushing up into part of Indiana. Mostly clear in the Hoosier State now, but we see some brighter, cold top thunderstorms out to the west in Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska. And there has been some severe weather with some of those thunderstorms tonight. In fact, this one you see right here on Super Radar brought a brief shower of golf ball-sized hail near Omaha, Nebraska. And these are severe thunderstorms that you see here in north-central Kansas. They are moving to the east-northeast. We'll have to keep an eye on those uh, throughout the night and tomorrow as well. Clouds in motion today show the powerful thunderstorms developing in Colorado and spilling over into the Plain States tonight. And that moisture headed in the general direction of the Ohio Valley, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Low pressure camped out here in Colorado. The front did come through as we expected today, just to the south of us though, and it's beginning to move north as a warm front in the Plain States, and that's what's kicking off all that activity. Here you can see it once again across the Plain States. Some more soaking rains in the southeast, so they certainly do need it there, but our eyes are peeled on these thunderstorms out to the west. If you're curious about temperatures in the nation today, 90s over about the southern half of the country. Look at Columbia, South Carolina, the 104 degrees in the nation's high, 108 at Needles, Bullhead City, and Lake Havasu City. The four latter two of those are in Arizona. And by midday tomorrow, that front going to be right around the area and the most concentrated showers and thunderstorms midday are going to be in Iowa and Illinois and a few of those could come into Indiana as early as tomorrow afternoon we'll have to watch out for some showers and thunder showers then for tomorrow night and on Tuesday as that front comes a little closer highs tomorrow in the Hoosier State in the 80s to the lower 90s so my forecast tonight looking pretty good mostly clear skies some ground fog might develop we'll drop down to 64 degrees Tomorrow, an increase in clouds, a high of 86. Then tomorrow night, we'll have a chance for some thunder showers with a low around 70 degrees. It's going to be muggy. Muggy again on Tuesday with a chance for thunder showers and a high of 86 degrees. And my extended outlook, there's going to be chances for thunder showers all three days, but the best chance on Thursday will highlight that with highs in the 80s. Just some typical July weather coming so up. So it was fun while it lasted today. <laughs> right. Thanks, Tom. Coming up in sports, it was a clear victory for Fuzzy Zeller at the Anheuser-Busch Classic. Jim Barber has highlights. Jim Barber's here with Sports Now, and it took a while, but we finally got the Pepsi 150 started and finished. Yeah, quite a few people got a chance to see it, a nice crowd. You didn't see any rain today, did you? No, we didn't. <laughs> I guess that's the key, huh? 7,500, that's not bad. No. No, that's a good race crowd. Mm -hmm. 12,000 a couple of weeks ago for the NASCAR race, and almost 8,000 today. With Channel 8 as one of the major sponsors of the race, Ken Trader took the checkered flag to grab the 150-mile run at Raceway Park today. Good start for this race. Gary Bettenhausen of IndyCar fame with the early lead in this one. Pretty good track, no incidents to report of. And Bettenhausen with the early lead. The first man to go out was an IndyCar driver, Johnny Parsons Jr. with a blown engine. Well, taking a lap 43, Schrader passes Bettenhausen for the lead. The defending champion, Rick Hood, raced well today. He wound up third. Car 20, Bob Fry was a challenger, but tire problems knocked him out. And Schrader took the checkered flag, told our Vince Welch afterwards about the tire usage. You know, we fell back at the start, and uh, we, we let a couple of them go during the race, and we tried to make it without a stop. And the, our tire is it's done now, but uh, it made it 150 laps far, so it did its job. Sure did. The all-star break has arrived for baseball, and not a minute too soon for the Cubs, who blew one in the ninth today, 4-3 to three to the Dodgers in a game seen on Channel 8. L.A. tied it up in the fourth when Mike Marshall got his 18th home run of the year. 2-2, two two, Dodgers and the Cubs. We go to the sixth when Keith Moreland comes through for Chicago. Moreland with a great series, two RBIs earlier in the game, and then an RBI double here. This one just kind of dropped in before Marshall to make it 3-2 to two Cubs. 
But the lead short-lived, two on and two out, bottom of the ninth, Trevino at the plate for the Dodgers and the Heroics. Here it is, line drive, left field going back, Mumford near the wall, gets the ball, Dodgers win, the Dodgers win, holy cow. Holy cow is right, Mets shut out the Braves, meanwhile 2-0 for a four-game sweep, outscored Atlanta 28-2 in this series. Ron Darling, the shutout, nine hitters, seven strikeouts. And Len Dykstra with the offensive support. He scored two runs, one of them here by way of a homer. Mets win it two to nothing. They're now 59 and 25 for the season. Reds lead Montreal in the game that has been suspended, three to two in the sixth. Philadelphia beat Houston in 11. Speaking of 11, the Giants scored 11 to beat the Pirates. And San Diego with a seven-run inning beat the Cardinals 13 to six. American lead Red Sox lead at the break by seven games over the Yankees in the East. Angels lead the West by one and a half over the Rangers. Today, California 12, Boston 3. Oil Can Boyd is back with Boston after apologizing. He should have pitched today, and because he didn't, California and Bobby Gritch had a field day scoring 12 runs. Dickie Schofield had three RBIs, including a controversial homer. I don't know if you could tell there if it's a home run or not. Now, Jim Rice is watching it hit the green monster. He figures it's off the wall for a single or a double at Fenway Park. But as it turns out, it's ruled a home run. This man gets it. Jim Rice isn't happy. Boston loses 12 to three. While the White Sox and new baby Dotson get the victory today over Baltimore, seven to nothing. Julio Cruiser Cruz with the RBI single to push Chicago head for good in the second, one nothing off of Scott McGregor. And then Joel Skinner only hitting 184 for the season up to this point. Gets a hold of one all the way out of the ballpark. Good for a three-run homer and a 4-0 White Sox lead. They win 7-0 and are now only seven and a half games out of first place. A couple of other shutouts today in the American League. Minnesota 5, the Yankees nothing. And it was Detroit 5, Kansas City nothing. Oakland beat Toronto 10-5, Texas 5, Cleveland 3-10. and Big surprise today in the World Basketball Championships where the U.S. men's basketball team upset by Argentina. 74 to 70, 16 missed free throws was the difference. In golf, Fuzzy Zeller wins another tournament today by two strokes in Virginia. Richard Zolko was the third round leader. He dropped off, but he had a great shot here. This is his third shot to the green. Watch the placement. Oh, this is pretty. But he had some tournament problems, and as a result, wasn't around toward the end. Fuzzy was coming up with this nice approach shot off the four iron. He played some great golf today, a 64. Kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Fuzzy was or fuzzy was her? Anyway, Fuzzy had a 64 today and won it by two strokes. He'll tap in, finish the round before everybody else did, and looking for the crowd to look on, and he picks up the victory today. Well, the final round at 64. Meanwhile, the Women's U.S. Open goes another 18 holes tomorrow. A tie today. Sally Little with a birdie at 15 to go minus one. Betsy King with a bogey. She was the leader going into this final round, but she's not around now. Gettys, Jane with a birdie here and a 69 today to force this 18-hole sudden death showdown tomorrow. Betsy King with a putt to stay close, but it's Gettys and Little. Little finished up with a par here at 18, and that means they'll have the final round tomorrow between those two. Should be a good final round, only fitting because the men's and Fuzzy Zeller a couple of years or a year back also went to an 18-hole playoff. That's it. Coming up next, we'll show you how Indianapolis is rolling out the red carpet for Blinky Bill. A city the size of Indianapolis has visitors coming and going every day, but for the next month, we will play host to a visitor, the likes of which we have never had a chance to see up close and personal. News intern Hillary Keen takes a look at the stir this West Coast traveler is creating. The excitement is mounting at the Indianapolis Zoo. The long-awaited unveiling of a special visitor, the koala Blinky Bill. The zoo is full of activity and preparation for the event. Eucalyptus is being planted so Blinky feels at home. The turtles and ducks are sprucing up the ground, while the geese are primping themselves for the occasion. A baboon keeps a watchful eye, and a kangaroo lounges in the sun, awaiting the introduction of his fellow countrymen. But the zoo is not the only place caught up in the hoopla. Clownmania has hit in the network. There are contests and promotions throughout Indianapolis. One lucky person will win this eight-foot version of the koala at Union Station, one of the many places the koala will visit while in the city. But no one's seen Blinky yet. He arrived by plane undercover Friday afternoon, and a limousine took him to his condo at the zoo. He's still resting from his trip from San Diego. Um, once the animal has come in on the plane, we like to give him several days of rest so that 
they're not stressed anymore so that when we open the curtains to the public, um, the little bit of stress that's involved with that is separated somewhat from the travel stress. The koala's visit is a treat for Indianapolis. He is a rare specimen for zoos in the United States. Koalas are extremely popular animals, I guess for a lot of reasons, but one of the main ones is that you just don't see them any place. They're only in, at this point, they're only in three zoos in this country. Because they, they can't be held everywhere and shown everywhere, I think it's exciting that, you know, we have a chance here in Indiana to have it here. Tomorrow is the big day. He will meet the press at 5 o'clock, then Tuesday he will meet the public. At the Indianapolis Zoo, Hillary Keene, WISH TV News 8. And the public's looking forward to it from what yeah. I can tell at the airport the other Sounds day. Sounds like Blinky Bill's got a lot of work to do, though. That's for sure. <laughs> That's all we have time for. I'm Eric Halverson. And I'm Tina Cosby for Jim Barber and Tom Magnuson. Good night.